Hello and welcome to New Wave Global. And I'm joined uh, by Dr. Aisha Siddiqui, uh, who is a Pakistani defense analyst, a scholar, uh, and she's live from London. And the reason I asked uh, Dr. Aisha to speak with us today is what is happening in the UK, especially in the past few days, there have been repeated attacks on Muslims, on mosques, on communities. And uh, let's not even forget what happened at the Manchester airport where police brutality against uh, uh, British citizens of Pakistani origin uh, came under in immense scrutiny by the press and the public. And since then, we've seen a, an unprecedented rise in sort of hate uh, speech and hate narratives about Muslims and immigrants in the UK. Uh, unfortunately, this is not limited to the UK because uh, the European continent, the United States, even, even Australia, uh, we have seen shades of this kind of uh, polarization and racial racialization of uh, the Muslim community uh, or, or, or communities. Uh, so I wanted to uh, talk about this in a bit of detail because Dr. Aisha Sahidika lives in London. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Sahidika. And I think uh, please help us understand what is happening after a massive labor victory just recently uh, and uh, a big number of Muslim MPs entering the British Parliament, uh, which was hailed as some kind of a, a changed political landscape. We have seen these string of events uh, which are not just disturbing, but actually uh, have the potential to undermine uh, the harmony, social harmony in the UK. Rasa, thanks for inviting me. Um, I was listening to your uh, introduction and I thought that, you know, we need to look at what happened in Manchester by the police uh, separately from what's happening now. Um, mm. What happened in Southport and Sunderland last night? Sunderland, there was massive writing last night, Friday night. There were hundreds of people. They tried to set a police station on fire. Um, and that has is, is an extension of actually what ha happened in Southport. Uh, there was stabbing. The stabbing was done by a, a minor, 17-year-old. Uh, what we also see, but before we get to the case, let me first tell you that Separately, what had happened was 14 years of Tory government in the UK, the way uh, internal security was, was controlled, um, the way police was controlled. So there has been problems with, I mean, uh, what happened in Manchester Airport is one issue. But then earlier on, we've also seen problems of uh, police involved in raping, uh, um, you know, and, and, and killing one of their own colleagues. <clears throat> so there is a problem with, 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 with British police. Um, a recent report in the BBC was that a lot of police are also leaving police force. So you have a problem there. Um, it's the Labour government, which has won the elections, 2024 elections, but it's also the Labour government which is uh, which has been left you know a div with with dearth of resources i mean conservative party hasn't left much in the kitty so there is that problem to deal with but what we also see here I mean, is what was noticeable in the 2024 elections was while labor won um we can't call it you know it's like as, as somebody joked about it it's not that labor won it's that tories lost and a lot of votes of the Conservative Tory party went not just to Labour, but it also went to Lib Dems. It also went to um, to the Reform Party, which is Nigel Farage's party. Uh, and the percentage vote of that reforms got is, is has significantly increased. Now, these are people for whom one of the issues which had been made central piece of British politics is immigration, immigrants coming to uh, to the UK. And let's also not forget there is a history to it. And the history is that 
over years, you've had this population, population coming from Africa, population, South Asian population in particular coming initially from Africa, then from their own countries, settling down and not just settling down. I mean, they, they work hard, they make money. And here is a comparison. You now have South Asian communities which have a better living standard. Uh, now, of course, one can get into details. Within South Asian community in, 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 in the UK, the Bangladeshis and Pakistanis are in a poorer state than the Indian community. But of course, you know, the, the Anglo-Saxon, the local Anglo-Saxon uh, can't tell the difference. Like we can't tell the difference between a Japanese or a Korean or a Malaysian or a Chinese. So they can't tell the difference. So for them, and for years, you've had this very negative publicity, especially 9-11, post 9-11, the depiction, the narrative against the Muslim community is all now coming together in anger of a working class, white working class, deprived. Um, we don't often don't talk about it, but there is a lot of rural poverty in the UK. That's right. So all of these, all of these factors are coming together, and there is anger. Uh, and right. if the British government doesn't put its foot down, uh, which it's trying to do, then it's really going to blow up. It's going to come to London as well. Sadly. Dr. Sadika, tell me, are you, you live in London. Are you, uh, how concerned are you personally? Because you, 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 I mean, you travel across the country. And uh, do you think uh, uh, that, you know, uh, the uh, British Muslims or Asians, I mean, are they are they getting more and more concerned because with this all these factors of racism, poverty, uh, inaction or or inadequate action by the British government? Uh, are you personally feeling a little uh, rattled or a bit insecure? Reza, no, not at the moment. And okay. I think what is important to appreciate about the UK's UK is also very highly multicultural. True. Uh, True. So one of the Conservative Party leaders said, oh, you know, these riots in, indicate that integration hasn't happened. But as, in, you know, the, the Conservative government was in charge, I mean, why didn't they work towards integration? But it's still integrated. I mean, when it happened in Sunderland and when it happened in, 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 in Southport, uh, the white British got together with that part of the, there's another part of the community which got together with the british south asians uh the, right. the, the, the 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 wall of the mosque which had been demolished by by the writers was rebuilt and the local community was there to help uh that's important to understand that it's still multicultural and there is still hope i think what the british government needs to do is really and uh, what the Labour government has done, it's made another a special force to deal with uh, writing and to really clamp down. I think what they probably need to do is take some very hard decisions. I mean, what do you do with Nigel Farage, who doesn't even pay taxes in the UK, yet he manages to generate all that violence? Seriously, I think with, around the world, what a serious uh, what's a serious issue is immigration. Economies right. are not doing so well. People get frustrated. There is social media. There is anger. So wherever you look, people out Europe are very uncomfortable with with immigration, and and this is not something unnatural. Uh, UK is a small island at the end of the day. And for oh. people trying to come in, uh, in droves, uh, it puts pressure. But what the government needs is a policy. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say as a South Asian who's living here, I'm not going to say that, you know, let anybody uh, taking the boat come in. I think there has to be a policy of how do you allow immigration. It does create political problems internally. Um, which need to be resolved. And I think all those forces which are creating conflict internally 
uh, the government has to clamp down. Yeah, it has to take uh, take note. So, Dr. Aisha, this immigration paradox is also problematic because, I mean, if you look at France, for example, or even Germany, which got so many Syrians because and they resettled them to small towns, you know, to revive factories in in France. Uh, the trash is collected by by uh, people of color, you know, especially immigrants from uh, Algeria, etc. In the UK, a lot of menial jobs historically, both in the, uh, you know, in the factories and elsewhere were conducted. I mean, if you look at all the, the riders who deliver food in the UK, and I've been to the UK, I mean, they're mostly immigrants. But this whole anger towards the immigrants is also kind of uh, uh, very paradoxical. On the one hand, the society and the economy need them. And on the other hand, they're also a target of racism. And where I live in the US, it's the same, actually. So uh, help us understand this immigration uh, think a little more, uh, and then we can conclude our discussion today. <clears throat> you know, it's it's we would like to imagine that these uh, workers, these working class people, have been brought in to work and do the menial job. Of course, a lot of ordinary jobs, um, blue collar jobs, are done by by, by migrants. Now, initially, 1950s and 60s, a lot of migrants from Africa, from South Asia were brought in to work. But mm. today, it's a cycle. So the migrants, they come, they have their families, they bring in more people. Uh, there is a cost to uh, the system as well. There is also a misuse of system. Yeah. And I don't think that the misuse doesn't happen. Uh, so, and let's also not forget that the reason that migrants continue to come is because the legal system uh, is soft enough to allow this kind of migration. Mm. Nobody's saying, mm. if, you know, if I'm right, if I'm working, if I'm paying taxes, I can bring in family. Uh, now, the, the the problem is that it's it's the problem is in both ends right you have these countries you know countries like pakistan even there is migration from india from bangladesh where local politics is not comfortable and people want opportunities and therefore they they want to migrate uh, they're not being brought in but there isn't there is an integration problem here as well on both sides it's not just that the local community the white british doesn't integrate it happens in both ends i've mm. seen families after families who have been living here for years and yet don't learn the language don't try to integrate into culture so you have disintegration on the one hand um uh, not proper integration, uh, what I mean, not disintegration, but sorry, pop, proper, yeah. lack of proper integration. On one hand, you have rising burden which these countries cannot take and therefore uh, they're crumbling, the system is crumbling and there's going to be a fallback uh, of all of that. And yes, law and right. order. Uh, that needs to be revised, worked, gre greater intolerance for any kind of violence. Uh, these societies have done it in the past, they need to do it again. Right, right. That is that is really a useful uh, ending to our uh, discussion. I think the British government really needs to do more. Uh, it has to look at its legislation, its policies, the, the police behavior, and the overall societal attitude towards the immigrants. With that, Dr. Sadika, I thank you again for your precious time. And viewers, if you have comments and questions, please leave them in the um, comment box and do subscribe to our, ch our channel. Thanks and goodbye.